Hi there, it's Mary Kong. And it has been a year since I started to make the Chinese literature video series on my channel. And looking back, I'm pretty happy about it. In 2018, I have recommended 28 Chinese books, including 24 books that I recommended here on my channel, and four other pieces of literature that I wrote as a blog post to Penny's blog called Read Yourself Happy. And it's actually quite a lot of work for me to do because I don't necessarily know which book has been translated into English or other languages. So it's involved a lot of research. But I enjoy doing that because, for one, I have more understanding of Chinese literature now. And another reason is the most important one. Whenever you guys told me that you read some Chinese books that I recommended and liked it, I genuinely feel really happy. So what I'm going to do today is to summarize all the 28 books that I have recommended last year and divided them into different genres and pointed out a start point in each genre. Because I know there are a lot of information and I have talked about a lot of books, so you may get lost in some point. And also different people have different interests. And after the summary, I will talk about some changes that I'm going to make to my Chinese literature series videos and what's new in 2019. I've categorized those 28 books into seven genres, including nine books in modern classics genre, which is actually a very good start point for Chinese literature in general, and one book in contemporary genre, and five historical fiction, two wuxia novels, also called Chinese fantasy or martial arts fiction. So for fantasy lovers, I think you are going to enjoy that little section. And two science fiction, four classes, and five other pieces of literature in a genre called others. By others, I mean they are memoirs and uh, plays and also poetry. I'll leave the timestamp for each genre down below in the description box. So if you are interested in particular genre, feel free to jump back and forth. And also I have a little disclaimer because the recommendations that I make in any of my videos strongly depended on my reading taste. They are not necessarily the perfect start point among all the fiction books or non-fictions in Chinese literature. It just depends on my taste and it's my personal opinion. <laughs> That's the longest intro that I have ever made for any of my videos, but I still have a lot to say. So grab yourself a snack or a coffee or tea and uh, let's get started. The first genre that I'm going to talk about is modern classics. They include a heartbreaking love story, which is not only a romance, but also a historical fiction called Half a Lifelong Romance by Zhang Ailing, who is also called Ailin Chang, and she is one of the most beloved writers in the English reading world. This book is a perfect sketch of the life in Nanjing and Shanghai in the early 20th century. It describes the most excruciating thing people can experience that make people cannot forget and make a few years forever long. A series of fictions that critiques the culture of modern China and the behavior of Chinese people written by one of the authors that we have to study in class in my generation called Lu Xun. And the book was called The Real Story of RQ and Other Tales. It is the completion of Lu Xun's fictional works and it was published by Pingguan. I love his writing and I enjoy every time when we study him in class. A hilarious love chasing story written from the perspective of a father and his son called Mr. Ma and Son written by Lao She. The couple of father and son traveled far away to London from China and in there they thought they met the love of their lives. This book shows the cultural difference between English people and Chinese people and it is both humorous and dark. A combination of two novels called The Field of Life and Death and The Tales of Hulan River written by one of the smartest and the most romantic Chinese female writers in history called Xiao Hong. These two novels tie to Xiao Hong's personal life closely and it describes the powerlessness that people experienced when they got carried out by historical events and the tragedy happened to women under the hierarchy society. Another book by Ellen Chang called Last Caution, which is a story inspired by the true story of a female spy in Chinese history. A student called Wang Jiazhi and her former drama trope in her school try to get acquainted with a person called Mr. E and assassinate him. But of course, things did not go with plan. 
And this book was originally written in English, so English readers, you cannot miss this one. Another book by Lu Xun, it is called The Diaries of a Madman and Other Stories. It is again a critique of the ancient Chinese culture, and it is where Lu Xun pointed out some of the values in ancient texts were outdated and needs to be improved. This is one of the most important work that pushed the history of Chinese literature and also the history of China forward. A kind of fantasy story written by Lao She called Cat Country, where the protagonists try to go to Mars on a spaceship, but the spaceship crashed and they have to land it on a country called Cat Country. Cat Country has its own unique but weird politics, education, and relationship with other nations, and our protagonist observe all the things as an outsider. Although it is a fantasy, but it's actually a reflection of the Chinese culture at the time. Another beloved book by Zhang Ailing, Ailin Chang, called The Love in a Fallen City, this is another historical fiction which sounds like a romance, which is actually also true. The story was happened in Shanghai and Hong Kong. You're following a woman trying to figure out her life, and she wanted to get free spirit, especially have the ability to love and be loved. But the culture has a big influence on her. The last book in this genre is called The Shop of Lin Family and Spring Silkworm by Mao Dun. Unlike other books set in big cities, this book talks about the day-to-day -day life for people in small town in early 20th century. It also talks about how the Second World War affected people in small towns, physically and financially. Among all those books in modern classic genre, I generally think each one of them will be a good start point for Chinese literature. However, if you still need some direction, I would like to say that read the Alin Chang's first. Because she's one of the most famous Chinese writers among English readers, and her writing style is modern and sharp, and you can really get the idea of the city lives in China at the time through her reading. And after that, you can pick up any of Lao She's work, because the two books that I've mentioned, they have peculiar settings, so they don't require a lot of background information. But if you really want to understand more of the Chinese cultures, I recommended you to read Lu Xun's work. I love him so much, and he has written some very important and deep thoughts fictions about Chinese culture. And Xiao Hong's book was also a very good start point. So I feel like I didn't answer the question about where to start in modern classics. Like I said before, they are all good. In contemporary genre, I only have one book, and that is A Concise Chinese-English Dictionary for the Lovers by Guo Xiaolu. This is actually a book that I heard on booktube here, so I assume it already has its audience in the English reading community. It's talking about the relationship between a Chinese woman when she first moved to the UK and an English man. Because the Chinese woman didn't speak English at first, so there are a lot of mistakes and misunderstandings in their communication. Within the novel, you see the language level of the Chinese woman gradually improved, so does the communication skill she used in their relationships. Since there are only this one book in contemporary genre, you don't need me to say where to start. So let's move on to historical fiction. I have five historical fiction that I recommended. They are one of the books that makes to my favorite list in 2018, The Last Quarter of the Moon by Chi Zijian. This is a saga of a hunting ethnic tribe called Yilanki about their culture, their relationship with the nature, their changes throughout the ages, and how outside world and historical events influenced and modernized their culture. The Song of Everlasting Sorrow by Wang Anyi. This book was set in the 40s of the 20th century and talking about a girl in Shanghai when they won the title of Miss Shanghai and started to live in a fancy lifestyle. But soon, the Second World War started and changed everything, including her life, but she refused to see the reality and continued wanting to live in a dreamy state of life. As the title suggested, this is a very sorrow book. A book that has been adapted into a movie by Zhang Yimou and casted by Gong Li called To Live, written by Yu Hua. This is a heartbreaking story talking about a wealthy man's life after his family got bankrupted. He and his loved ones experienced the hardest life you can ever imagine, and they also been pushed forward by the changes of generation. Another book that was adapted into a movie by Zhang Yimou and casted again by Gong Li was called Red Sorgan. 
This book was written by the Nobel Prize in Literature winner Mo Yan, and is set in the 30s and 40s of 20th century. It is a brutal story talking about how people can be both good and evil for the different sides of the same issue. I haven't talked about this book on my channel, but I have recommended it on the blog post that I wrote for Penny's blog. I'll leave the link of the blog post down below. The last book in this genre was also adapted into a movie by Zhang Yimou. What can I say? He has a brilliant taste for historical fiction. And it's called The Flowers of War by Yan Geling. It was inspired by a piece of true history in China, talking about during the Second World War when Japanese army was raping and killing people in Nanjing, and a group of prostitutes tried to sacrifice themselves to save the life of a group of female students when the female students were at first looking down to the prostitutes. In this genre, I recommend you to start with To Live by Yu Hua or The Flowers of Moon by Yan Geling. They are both catching stories. And after reading To Live, you will think about the meaning of life. And after reading The Flowers of War, you will start to think about the meaning of death. Not to mention that after the two books, you can also see the two movies, which is a bonus, I think. And as much as I love The Last Quarter of the Moon, I have to say the pacing of that book was a little bit slower. But if you really need a dreamy atmosphere story, I recommend you to start with The Last Quarter of the Moon. And now it's time to move to wuxia novels. And again, they are also called Chinese fantasy or martial art fiction. And I have two books here. The first book in this genre was one of my favorites in 2018, Legends of Condor Heroes, with the first volume titled as A Hero Born by Jin Yong. It's talking about a Chinese boy who was born in Mongolia and went back to China to figure out the truth behind his birth and also finish the mission that his master Shi Fu left him. And also he interacted with my fictional love, a brilliant girl called Huang Rong. And in this book, you could really understand what can be called as a hero in Chinese culture. The second book in this genre was also a masterpiece. It is The Eleventh Son by Gu Long. It's talking about the story of the world's greatest thief trying to steal the world's most powerful knife. And then he met the most beautiful woman in the world. I have to say that please don't be annoyed by all the greatest and all the most in this story. This is just how Gu Long crafted his story. Everybody was the greatest in some way, and I got used to that, and I had a lot of fun with his books. In this genre, I definitely recommend you to start with The Legends of Condor Heroes, with the first volume called A Hero Born. This is not to say that the other book was not good. These are both the best works for the authors, and the two authors are masters in wuxia genre. It's just the translation of the Legends of Condor Heroes is more is newer, so I think it's more accessible when reading. However, I didn't read the English translated version, so I really couldn't tell. So let's reframe that. If you want some story with huge historical background but not dry, you can start with Legends of Condor Hero. If you want something to entertain and to with a humorous atmosphere, start with the 11th Sun. Let's move to science fiction. I know there are a lot of science fiction readers here on Booktube, however, I'm not a really big fan of science fiction. And one of the books that I'm going to talk about actually contributed to my dislike to science fiction genre. But both of them won the Hugo Reward, which is the best rewards you can win in science fiction genre. And they are the first science fiction is called Folding Beijing by Hao Jingfang. It is actually a novella talking about things happen in the future where people have been divided into three classes and lived in Beijing accordingly. The space of Beijing cycles every 48 hours where the first class people lived in the first 24 hours and the second class lived in the following 16 hours and the rest of the people lived in the 8 hours that left in one cycle and people cannot travel between classes, but as you can guess, our protagonist did travel and had some adventure. Second book in science fiction was called Three Body Problems by Liu Cixin, and this is that type of the book when people discover they can communicate with the aliens. So of course people did that and got connected with aliens and was horrored by the advanced stage of the technology that the aliens has. I was mad to this book when I read it and it's just not for me and it is the book that made me 
dislike science fiction, but it has a lot of audience in both China and other countries, and also it won the Hugo Awards. So I suppose it's good in some way, just it's not a book for me. Between those two books, I definitely recommend you to start with Folding Beijing because it's not only shorter, but also the concept to me is more creative. However, please don't be discouraged for three-body problem just because I don't like it. It is actually the most beloved science fiction novel in China, and I personally know some friends who love it very much, and it is their favorite books of all time. Also, I want to say something about the translation. Both of the two books are translated by Ken Liu, who is a Chinese-American science fiction writer, and his writing was phenomenal. He has wrote The Grace of Kings and other novels, which I have The Grace of Kings on my shelf that I haven't read yet. But because of his translation, I have heard the translated version of Three Body Problem is actually better than the original one. So that's something to be considered. And that's enough for science fiction. Let's move on to classics. I have introduced the four big great classic novels in China, and they are wonderful family saga of Jia family called The Story of the Stone, also called Dream of Red Chamber by Cao Xueqin. It is a lively picture about the big family life happened in Qing Dynasty, and it has dozens and dozens vivid female characters. Each of them are three-dimensional, has their individual personalities, and it focuses a lot on the female's life under the feudal society system. And it is the feminist one among the four classical novels, and also my favorite. The wonderful fantasy classics called Journey to the West, which introduce us to the amazing Monkey King and his master Shi Fu, Xuan Zhuang, and two other apprentices. They're on the journey to the West, which is actually India, to obtain the Buddhist secret text. And on the road, they need to overcome 20, not 20, 81 difficulties and tested by the Buddha. The romance version of a piece of true story happened in Chinese history called The Romance of Three Kingdoms by Luo Guanzhong. It talks about the story from the year of 169 to the year of 280 and among three kingdoms called Wei Shu Wu, it tackles on their power balance and the strategy that they use to deal with other nations. A story about 108 outlaws called The Water Margin by Shinai An, the outlaws gathered at Mount Liang and preparing for a revolt. This is a story about how they became outlaws and how they became heroes after that. And it happens in Song Dynasty, so it is also a historical fiction at its time. Among those four great classic novels, I of course recommend you to start with The Story of the Stone. I hosted a read-along for it last year, and I still have some videos that I need to post for that read-along. In our read-along group, a lot of English readers actually talks about the modern style of the writing in The Story of the Stone, and also they kind of like it. So I think it will be a good start point for for the Chinese classics, and also it is one of my favorite books of all time, so I highly, highly recommend you to start with it. Now, finally, let's move on to the genre called Others. And Others, I have one poem, one memoir, and three plays to talk about. A piece of short but very powerful poem called The Answer, written by Bei Dao, who is one of the most respected modern poets in China. And this poem was written right after Cultural Revolution, and it is the start of a new genre in Chinese poetry called Misty Poem. You can read it online, I'll leave the link down below in the description box. A memoir that's written by one of the most respectful scholars in Chinese literature history, and the memoir was called Six Chapters from My Life Down Under. This is a record of Yang Jiang, and Yang Jiang's husband got to send to a small town and separated during the Cultural Revolution, and it is a record of their happiness and bitterness at that time. A classic play called The Tea House, written by the beloved author I've mentioned before, Lao She. And this is the play where you can see the changes of generations through different stages of one same tea house and a group of friends who go there a lot. I am lucky enough to see this performance on stage, and it was wonderful. A family saga talks about the construction of a big family called Thunderstorm written by Cao Yu. In this family, the younger generation got some modern education, so they want freedom in their lives. 
but the older generation hold on some traditional values that limited the younger generation, and not to mention they also keep some very deep secret in their family which led to the tragedy. The play about how people can get lost in big cities called The Sunrise, also written by Cao Yu. You follow a bunch of characters' crazy life when nothing was stable. They're chasing money and fame, but in the meanwhile, something dark is also chasing them. Among those pieces of literature, I don't really have a suggestion for you because they are so different. However, if you like plays, I recommend you to start with Tea House by Lao She. But if you ever have the chance to see the performance on stage, definitely don't miss them. And here we have all the Chinese books that I recommended in 2018, and I hope the suggestions I make in this video are helpful to you in some way. And now, let's talk about the changes I'm going to make to my Chinese literature series videos. Some of you may notice that I call the videos that I made last year Season 1 of the Chinese literature series, and now I think it's time to take a break from Season 1. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop talking about Chinese books on my channel. Actually, I'm going to include more reading of Chinese books in my day-to-day -day reading life. So for the first half of 2019, I won't be making any exclusive Chinese literature videos on my channel, except the ones that I need to post for the story of the stone read-along. But I'm going to read at least one Chinese book per month and include them in my monthly wrap-up because I do need to read more in order to talk about them. And in the second half of 2019, the season 2 of Chinese literature series will come back and I'm planning to do some themed videos based on genre like in this video or based on different periods of Chinese history. But as we know, our mind changes constantly, so my topics for the season 2 of Chinese literature video may change in the future, but it will be returned. And I guess that's all I want to say. I'll take a break from the series videos for a while and come back with a better one, hopefully, and include more Chinese literature in my day-to-day -day readings. As I said before, it is very hard for me to research for which book has already been translated into English or other languages, so if you have come across any of the Chinese books and you want me to talk about it, feel free to leave a comment in any of my videos and also you can contact me on Instagram or Twitter and I'll be happy to check out the books. And that's all for this video. I hope you find this video helpful and if you have stayed this long, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. And yeah, take care and happy reading. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!